He was on the. It's our Who Do You Like More segment, right? Okay. It's going to be either Pittsburgh, Chicago, or Columbus, or Athens. Okay. All right. Food, Pittsburgh or Chicago? Chicago. Okay. Food, Columbus or Athens? Columbus. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Okay. Coaching, Pittsburgh or Chicago? Pittsburgh. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. It's not good. Come on. Pittsburgh, not close. So, you know, that's that's going to be now it's sort of a meant to be a lighthearted segment, perhaps. Yeah, they're but, talking about their own coaches. Like, and, what are they going to say? In the world in which we live, though, right, yeah. we don't know what's going to happen. That's going to get aggregated as Justin Fields takes shot at Bears coaches. Yes? It just doesn't track with anything we know about Justin Fields, right? I mean, like, there was an, there was an issue last year where he said something publicly that got portrayed that way, and he got furious. He right. came out and did a, a press conference to talk about what he actually meant. Like, he's, he's pretty careful. I think he's sitting there with teammates talking about their coach. What are you going to say about your current coaching staff? Right. Obviously, they're your favorite coaches. I, right. I, give him a, I give Justin Fields a pass because of his track record. You, you didn't like him. Yeah, we're in the friends business. As a free agent, we want 32 teams to love him. So we love all our coaches. Let's put it this way. He's not going back to Chicago no matter what. <laughs> they could they could offer no, him not going $9 trillion. Hey, dollars. Hey, Marcus, hey guys. Go. Yeah. Hey, guys. Yeah. He ain't lying. No, he's he not. He ain't lying. Right. We know he like Mike Tomlin and that coaching staff better. He ain't he telling the truth. Like, I mean, how we portray it, how we pr- project what it's going to mean to the other 32 teams. Right now... Justin Fields is one of the best volunteers in the NFL because he loves his coaching staff, and Mike Tomlin has all of all of it to do with. So all of that said, put the pickup on the screen. Uh, Bartholomew, how about it? Steelers this weekend against the Colts. Clean sweep. Uh Uh-oh. Yeah, yeah. I I, I believe that the Steelers have a formula. Nobody can muck up a game like Mike Tomlin. I don't know. He can Thomas his way to to a winning record this year, and they'll find a way to get in the wild card or something like that, and they'll lose in the first round. But listen, (laughs) nobody does more with less than than, than Mike Tomlin, one of my favorite coaches of all time. Listen, and Justin Fields' uh, ascension, you know what I mean? In my opinion, is an indictment on Matt Everflus and his ability to coach. And we're seeing it with Caleb Williams. So the better he plays, the more f- – and Caleb Williams continues to struggle, Matt Everflus' job may be on the line. Greeny, I said a month ago they should put Mike Tomlin in Canton during the bye week. I mean, with this offense, to do what they're doing, to be in first place right now, it's remarkable. And in this game, you're talking about styles make fights. Indiana- Justin Fields, he has the Steelers rolling after leading the team to a 20 to 10 victory over the Chargers yesterday with Russell Wilson still sideline. Fields turned in his most efficient performance yet, throwing a touchdown and running for another. Pittsburgh is now 3 0 for the first time since 2020. The Steelers also sit atop the AFC North standings and the only team in the division with a winning record. Although they've scored only 17 points per game, their stellar defense is allowing less than 10 per game. All right, S.A., you're a Steelers fan. We all know the deal. Talk to me. Are the Steelers dangerous in the AFC? Uh, uh, eh. Come on, speak it with you. Uh, okay. Speak it with you. I'm say. not sure. I, I'm not sure. <laughs> all right, look, look, man. Look, look. All right, look, 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 look. I have to <laughs> say something on national television here. Shay Shay, Notorious Woody. Let me tell you something, bro. I I I ain't gonna take Justin Fields out of the lineup now. I I, I know that I said before I didn't. Oh. I want to see Russell Wilson, but I, I I have changed my mind. I ain't taking him out of the lineup now. I loved what I saw from him yesterday. First of all, he completed his first ten throws, and I know they were short and intermediate in, in, intermediate throws, and I get all of that, but. His decision-making, running with the football as well, being that dual threat, some of the throws that he was doing, I liked what I saw. He threw an interception, but for the most part, protecting the football, you know, getting rid of it when necessary, not taking sacks like the 99 sacks over the last two years he took coming into this season. He's being well coached. Mike Tomlin's just continuing to show his greatness. Uh, this is the fourth time they started up 3-0 with, with, with him as the coach the other three times, 2007, 2010, 2020. They made the playoffs each time. I get all of that. One of those years they went to the Super Bowl, if I remember correctly. I mean, I'm just looking at them right now. I'm happy with what I'm seeing. The defense led by T.J. Watt, my God, he is so special. He really, really is. He is Mm -hmm. something to behold. So I'm looking at the defense and what have you, and I know that they got the pieces around him offensively. It was just about that quarterback position. And Justin Fields yesterday against a Chargers defense that was only giving up like six and a half points again coming into the game, for crying out loud. I mean, to see 
you know, him be able to do what he did when it counted against that defense. Can't say enough about him. Uh, very impressed with him. And I, I would I would concede I'm not taking him out of the lineup. But when we ask how dangerous are they in the AFC, it's one thing for him not to mess up and to show the improvement that he's shown. I just still need to see some believe in the defense. I need to see some offensive firepower from this team if I'm going to believe that they're going to be that big, bona fide, dangerous threat in the AFC. Well, damn, I wish you started with that point because that's all you had to say, Woody. Woody, that's all he had to say. I <laughs> why, like why, what why? I'm seeing from the Steelers, but I'm <laughs> I don't feel like doing it, Shay. But I, I don't feel like doing it, man. All that tap dancing <laughs> for what? <laughs> that's that this, you know what I'm saying? Right behind, right behind. Nickel, is this the nickel? Hey, I say, is this the nickel brothers or is this Gregory Hines? All this time he got going on. I'm going to need to see. I'm going to need to see more Molly offensively. Stephen A. is absolutely right. That defense has been very, very, they've been great thus far. But the question is, what happens if you can get a lead and you force Justin Fields to beat you throwing the football? Because right now they're doing a great job of running it. They run it with him. They run it with Najee Harris. They run it with Warren. So they're doing a great job of being able to dictate and control the pace in which the game is being played at. But we know, Woody, having played as long as we have, eventually somebody's going to get a lead. And they're not going to let you play safe football. Safe football when you're behind is not the way to win football games. You can play this way as long as you have the lead and you're able to dictate the pace in which you play at. But when you fall behind and they force your, force your quarterback and they put the ball in his hands, let's see how well they can do it. Now, they own to be a great, they're on a great track. Uh, I saw the stat that we just put up. They have an 80% chance of making the, uh, making the playoffs. Their defense is going to keep them in a lot of games because they're really, really good. The question is, if they ever get behind by more than a field goal, more than a touchdown, is he going to be uh, Justin Fields? Will he revert back to some of his old habits that he had in Chicago, or can he stay on the straight and narrow and lead this team from, to a comfort behind victory? You know, Shay Shay, man, we, uh, we, we always say, man, coaching matters in the National Football League more so than any it other league. It absolutely does. It's, and if you look at – and the prime example is Justin Fields. You know, when we talked about Justin Fields coming to the season, a couple things we always talked about. How much he had been sacked, how many sacks he took, and then turnovers. That's not what he's doing in Pittsburgh right now. He's playing efficient football, complimentary football, and I can even say after yesterday's game, yesterday's game was a prime example of a guy who was transitioning from athlete playing quarterback to a quarterback who's an athlete. That's what Justin Fields looked like yesterday. We saw the playmaking ability. We saw the throws in the, in the middle of the field. We saw accuracy. We saw touch on the football. That's what it's going to take. Are there questions that need to be answered as far as this Pittsburgh Steelers offense? Absolutely. They're checking the boxes. But if he continues to make progress at the quarterback position with the way they're playing defense, absolutely the Pittsburgh Steelers are a threat in the AFC. Okay, if you don't – listen, Shay Shay, you know this. If you don't turn the ball over, if you don't turn the ball over and you're able yeah. to play, play good defense – you got a shot to win every well, single game. And that's one thing that Justin Fields is doing. He's taking care of the football. He's getting better at playing the quarterback position. And as long as that keeps going on this track, the Pittsburgh Steelers will be a threat in the AFC. Well, damn it, Woody. Who's tap dancing now? Let me tell you I'm something. I'm not right tap now. dancing. It, it's not, I oh, answered the question. Minute. Wait a minute. I answered the question. It said, it said how dangerous are, not would be. I just Woody. said that they, they would be one of the top teams Woody. in the AFC. It says, oh, how, oh, how dangerous are they? <laughs> the fact <laughs> of the matter is I'm looking at Justin Fields, and I'm saying to you, I'm very, very pleased. I'm very, very pleased. But you know why I'm very, very pleased with him? Because he had been so bad in years past. The fact of the matter is, if this brother was a Joe Burrow, if he was a Lamar Jackson, if he was even a Justin Herbert, we would say, it's all right. But we need more. We just are pleased because he's coming from a very low bar. Let's call it what it is. And so, so what I'm saying you, so, is now. So yeah. what I'm so saying is now. Think, what, 
So why don't you what, get, why aren't you giving your boy Mike Tomlin some more credit here? I'm, you I'm haven't given your boy hold Mike hold Tomlin hold some hold credit. Hold it, hold it. Because because <laughs> I'm th because I've seen quarterbacks ruin his day. Tom, Mike Tomlin's been great. <laughs> Mike Tomlin's been a great coach. You understand? He's found a way to work around not having anything. I've seen quarterbacks ruin that man's Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's Eve, and everything else in between. The brother can't enjoy the holiday season for years. I don't know when's the last time Mike Tomlin's had a good Christmas because of the damn quarterback situation in Pittsburgh and how they've ruined his greatness as a coach. But this year is threatening to be different. All I'm trying to say is I'm trying to look out for my man Mike T. I'm trying to sit up there and make sure that we manage our expectations. The defense is big time. They got to the quarterback Herbert and Heineke, okay? Not the muffler Heineke, the quarterback Heineke, okay? They got to him, all right? They got, the, they got Herbert out of there in the second half. They got to Heineke the rest of the way. I got that. I saw Austin, I, I saw Austin making plays. I saw Fryermuth making plays. I saw Scotty Miller making plays for crying out loud. I liked it. I liked it. I liked it. I don't have problems with the Steelers personnel with Warren and, ha and Harris out of the backfield and what those brothers are going to be capable of doing, assuming everybody's healthy come playoff time. The issue is how are we going to feel about the quarterback? That's all I'm saying. I need to see more, but I'm happy with the progress that is United been. States. This is this is one of those ones that might be a little bit unpredictable, Rich, because it's not a it's not a torn ACL. It's not a high ankle sprain. It's an Achilles issue. It's not a tear. It's it's a different type of a, a pain that he's feeling in that area. It's obviously bothering him enough that Kyle Shanahan said it himself, you know, the worst day he had was when he was trying to ramp up into week one. The 49ers have to find a way to stay afloat. They've had a lot of injuries. It's not like they're getting Kittle back this week. Debo's back on the field. Whether or not he plays in this game or it's in their next game, that's certainly a good sign there. But, you know, this is one of the top players in the NFL. That challenges you as a whole, and there's just not necessarily anything definitive because even if and when Christian McCaffrey gets back onto the field, there's always the possibility this is something that's still nagging him. So he's trying to figure it out. And then the injured reserving of Tua was supposed to just give him the space and take away the timeline conversation when it comes to him, Tom. And, you know, then he travels with the team on a six-hour flight, and the quarterback situation in um, in Seattle for Miami was just seemingly a lost cause, you know? And so... We're, we're hearing rumblings about maybe knocking on Denver's door for Zach Wilson or seeing how things play out with Pittsburgh's Wilson. Um, it, it, are the Dolphins quarterback shopping, knocking on doors, or they're already expecting to a back? What, what, what is the timeline of it, even though we're supposed to give the space to that with his injured reserving, Tom? Well, I would tell you this, Rich, at last check, the Dolphins hadn't called either of those teams. If you're thinking Tua Tungavailoa is not going to play for the rest of the season, you would think you would be looking for those long-term answers. Maybe it's one of those guys who's a backup quarterback. Maybe it's somebody else's starter who potentially could become available if that team is losing games and is out of the hunt and is just looking to uh, get a draft pick for somebody. But for the Dolphins right now, with Tua Tungavailoa, he did make that trip. The doctors cleared him to fly. It's like six hours cross country to Seattle. They they cleared him to make that trip. And basically the short version, this is not the medical version, but the short version of what they've told him is, hey, if you're feeling good, do all your normal activities, just not football stuff. And that's what Tua wants. He wants to be engaged. He's been in meetings. He was on the sideline. He was talking to the quarterbacks. That all tracks with what we've been reporting, which is that Tua intends to be back on the field um, at some point in the future and quite possibly later on this season. He's been visiting specialists this week. That was kind of the next checkpoint in that. There's specialists in Pittsburgh and Detroit that he visited back in 2022. You would anticipate those are among the specialists that he's visiting this time around as well. In terms of what they're doing this week, they put Skylar Thompson out there. Skylar Thompson had earned the job, the number two job back in training camp. He beat out Mike White for it. I know that, I mean, they've kept him around for three years. He started a playoff game for him. They see something in Skylar Thompson, but it didn't translate to the field. And then he got beat up and he got hit and he's been dealing with a very painful rib injury, according to Mike McDaniel, has practiced on a limited basis. It's mm. hard to imagine with that injury, Skylar Thompson is going to be out there this week, which then would leave you with Tim Boyle, who, you know, just 
quite frankly, is a, is a practice squad guy all the way. We've seen Tim Boyle play in the NFL before, or it's Snoop Putley who made the Pro Bowl a couple of years ago because he relieved Lamar over the last, what, five games of that season and was able to, you know, get things functioning. It's, it's not, you know, this isn't Lamar Jr., okay? You're not getting that from Snoop Putley, but there's probably all kinds of things that you haven't used in your offense before because you're not going to expose Tua as a runner because you're not going to do some of those design types of things. You know, if it is Snoop Huntley on Monday night, and if I were guessing, if I were just guessing, Rich, I would say that's who the starting quarterback would be. Hmm. There's going to be some unscouted stuff that the Titans are going to be facing just because you would never do some of the things with Tua that you can do with Snoop. I would also say this, when you're talking about your franchise quarterback, the $53 million a year player in Tua Tonga Bailoa, you expect that guy to raise the level of everybody around you. When you're onto your backup quarterback or your third string quarterback, you need those other players to raise the level of the quarterback. Tyree Kill did not play well last week. Jalen Waddell did not play well last week. They got to play better in this game, regardless of who's a quarterback for the Dolphins to have a chance. And I assume most are not expected also on Monday night at this point in time. Hasn't been practicing. We'll see. That's that's right. kind of a, a weird one. It's a chest injury for Raheem Mostert. They initially thought he was going to be back for their last game, and then he didn't practice. Um, you know, we'll get the, the final designation. I haven't seen it yet. If Mike McDaniel said exactly what the designation is going to be, but certainly when a guy hasn't practiced in this long since an injury, you would, you would think he's not going to play, which would mean it's Devon A. Chan's going to have to be leading that backfield. You know, I'll ask this on the air, even though this is an off the air question. When, when you come on the show, do you want us to take like a 30 second break to check your phone or something like that? Cause I feel like I'm, I'm holding things back. <laughs> well, you're, you're no, expertly we're, working we're us good. through everything and, and you're, you're also receiving information. Honestly, I, we can be, we can talk about, amongst ourselves for a good 30 seconds if you gotta if yeah, you gotta check sure. on something if i gotta take a call yeah, if i gotta take to a call Tom. i'll take a call these no, okay. are these are texts okay. that might bear on some things i've said in the last 15 minutes on the show <laughs> so we'll uh we'll, we'll update those uh, <laughs> uh, honestly here. like we could nothing have, like, nothing halftime. catastrophic or something catastrophic like no, two seriously. weeks ago when Bryce Young got pinched right before I came right. on, I'll give you the goods okay. on that. This is more, this is still fluid here. Dude, I could reach out to Jay-Z. We can get a musical act. Yeah, you know, I do like Pelissero half seconds. Time. Yeah, yeah Pelis, the 30-second act. You know, half half for this one, okay. Tom. All right. I do like that. Um, it, we, we had uh, Kevin O'Connell on yesterday. I asked him if he's expecting to see Jordan Love. He said yes. What do you think? It certainly seems to be tracking in that direction, Rich. But if you had asked me last Friday, I would have said it seems like it's tracking to, for Jordan Love to have a chance to play in that game against Tennessee as well. Mm -hmm. the, the last two steps are going to be he needs to get medical clearance from the Packers doctors. And Jordan Love has to tell those doctors, tell the coaches, tell everybody, hey, I can do this. I want to be on the field. I think I can move. I can protect myself. I can play well enough. You know, you go all the way back to when that injury occurred, which was three weeks ago today. It was a three to six week injury. That's the timetable they gave him for an MCL sprain. There was always optimism that he would be on the shorter end of that timetable. But this is the first game that really falls within the timetable. So right now, you would say based upon his level of participation, does not seem like he's had any setbacks. It's an MCL sprain, so you can play with a brace. MCL is going to heal while you play with that brace on. You would say this is the best chance yet for Jordan Love to be on the field. But, you know, again, there's there's some final conversations that have to take place Friday and Saturday morning. Packers will have a good idea within 24 hours whether or not he's going to be on the field. It's a huge game. There's no doubt about it with the unbeaten Vikings coming to Lambeau Field. But, you know, they've also kind of had their season on the line the past couple of weeks. They found a way to win with Malik Willis. You know, even if, even if the reps are limited, Rich, I would say this with Jordan Love. They're running more or less the same type of game plan. They can expand it more. There's some additional things that they would do with Jordan Love, but it'd be pretty similar, even if he's not able to take all the reps through the week, which they're saying he's limited here. Um, you know, Jordan Love will be ready to roll if, in fact, all those conversations occur and he, he's out there on Sunday. A couple of questions about Kansas City at Los Angeles. Um, Justin Herbert's going to go, even with a bye, coming up next week. What do you think? He wants to go. And last week, the, you know, despite all odds, despite, you know, about five rolls of tape on that ankle, he found his way to be out there. And, and really, he was pretty effective until the third quarter when he started taking those hits and then he tweaked the ankle. And then it just, you know, it wasn't something that he was going to be able uh, to keep going on. You know, again, that that's another injury that, you know, if you feel confident that you can get out there and function well enough, there's a chance that you can heal while playing on a high ankle sprain. It's not good to keep injuring it, obviously, but there's nothing here that suggests that, you know, anything's broken, anything has extended the timetable at this point. There's a lot of guys who don't necessarily have that same mentality of, hey, I'm going to put myself out there. I want to go 
every single week, you know, so so good for Justin Herbert. I don't think the Chargers, I know the Chargers wouldn't put him out there if they feel like he's putting himself in harm's way, but you're also talking about a team that's not going to have its 